one. Okay, my name is Miracle. This is another Colingo class. We are going to be looking at 25 awe-inspiring European castles. Looking forward to this. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, or at least I hope. Yesterday I thought the class was going to be fun and it was it was weird. It was like 25 roadside attractions that you would see in the US or that you can see in the US. Oh my gosh, it was so embarrassing. I thought, you know, when we look at attractions from Russia or Thailand or China, Hong Kong, we've been all over virtually, you know, on the internet. We've been all over and looked at different countries, different cultures, just, you know, exploring the world. And the most embarrassing uh, attractions were the ones in the U.S. Embarrassing. It was horrible. So, anyway, today we go back to Europe, and I think it will be good. I really do. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let me get the link for you. Whoops. Okay. This is going to be good. Okay. I see someone in the lobby. There is the link. If you want to see that with us. Okay, the link is there in the lobby. Uh, so we are looking at, and I will share my screen just in case. Twenty-five awe-inspiring European castles. Once upon a time on windy moors or in sublime gardens, knights and damsels were, went for strolls, well-designed aristocrats danced in grand ballrooms, and fierce battles were waged along the stone walls. Now this is the stuff of fairy tales, but the majestic castles that remain resplendent throughout Europe stand to remind us of how real these times once were. Visiting one of these castles transports you back to a time that was a bit more dreamy than today, and that's why we love them. From stark, foreboding fortresses to operatically opulent palaces, these 25 castles are the cream of the crop. Nice. Let's see what we have. I don't know how to say this. Karlstein Castle, Prague, Czech Republic. This stunning hilltop castle that overlooks Prague was once Charles IV's summer palace. Now it's home to the Chapel of the Holy Cross, which once held and guarded the crown jewels and is flanked by 129 painted wood panels and an arched canopy with semi-precious stones. After long sieges during the Hussite, Hussite Wars of 1420, interest in the castle waned until renovations at the end of the 19th century restored the monument. Insider tip. Opt for the 75-minute over the 55-minute tour. It includes the Chapel of the Holy Cross or forego the pricey tours altogether and opt for the free exterior courtyards. Very cool. I don't know anything about this castle. It's beautiful though. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, and it once belonged to Charles IV. It was his summer palace or his summer home. Okay, let's look at number three. Or number two. Chateau de Castelnaud. Dordogne. Okay, my French is horrible. France. Oh, I wish they could have had a better picture. We can't really see that one. So far away. 
The architecture of Chateau de Cassonald has evolved from the, the 13th to the 17th century, making for a majestic finished product that stands on a rocky spur above the confluence of several valleys above the Dordogne. It was almost destroyed by arson in 1851, but Paris opera tenor Jean Moulière, Moulière, whatever, purchased and restored it in medieval style. Regal collections are now assembled um, on the first floor of the East Wing, and a small village surrounds the castle on the slope of its hill. Castle Nod presides on top, clearly visible with its walls of red stone. Insider tip, bring your kids along. They'll love the constructions of medieval weaponry around the grounds. Hmm. Chateau de Benac, de Rode I don't know how to say this, it's in France. Good grief, that is just tremendous. One of the best preserved and most well-known castles in its region, Chateau de Bainac perches atop a rugged limestone cliff etched by the elements and history, overlooking the town and the north bank of the Dordogne River. Unassailable from its plateau perch, the 13th century castle is also protected by a double moat, double cranial, crenelated, crenelated? I don't know that word. This is the word here. I've never heard of that. Double crenelated walls and double barbican. Frescoes and sumptuous tapestries drape the inner walls of this fortress, whose foreboding romantic appearance has made it the perfect backdrop for several feature films. Insider tip. Consider cramping below the chateau, beside the Dordogne. The picturesque view, which shifts with the light throughout the day, makes it worthwhile. Okay. Um, this is really, really beautiful. It's interesting. You can see the can see just how grand it's not just a palace it is a chateau you can see just how grand it is because there are people in the water you can see the trees and so you get a feel for the, the different dimensions of different buildings and you can see in comparison to these people this group of houses or buildings here and then the chateau up top it just it must be massive Massive. Alien Donan Castle in Scotland. This romantic 14th century Scottish castle is straight from a dark fairy tale and is certainly the most picturesque of all Scottish castles, nestled on an islet connected to the mainland by a stone arched bridge. It guards Lochs Long, Alsh, and Dwy with muscular stone walls, timber ceilings, and twisting stairs. Not until the early 20th century was the castle restored to its original splendor, which was ruined after the Spanish Jacobite landing of 1719. Insider tip. Climb the hill overlooking the castle, and you'll be rewarded with a very photographable view of Alien Donan Castle with a lovely isle of sky in the background. This is gorgeous. Just gorgeous. It's a little disconcerting that the lack of windows in this building though. There is a severe lack of windows. It, it looks like it would be very stuffy and just stuffy and dank and dark. It's pretty from the outside though. Raglan Castle, Wales. 
Passers-by might not notice, but Raglan Castle hides its majestic inner ruin with a proudly regal front side. The Welsh castle, which was built in the 15th century and serves as the Henry Tudors and served as the Henry Tudors late Henry the seventh childhood home lived a brief but illustrious life attacked by parliamentary forces in the English Civil War it has lain in ruin ever since oh. only the hexagonal great tower survives in considerably good condition along with a few ground floor rooms that's sad that looks beautiful inside her tip right next door you'll find Tudor farmhouse which is stunning in its own right and also houses the castle cafe don't miss the leek and potato soup this is beautiful I can't believe it it's in ruins except for a few rooms it's incredible Alcazar of Toledo Spain this is gorgeous oh my goodness this commanding stone fortress dominates Toledo Spain from the city's highest point its four corner spires jabbing regally to the sky once a Roman palace in the third century the Alcazar was restored by Spain in the 1540s and now contains a sizable display of war memorabilia including a sword collection fitting for the castle's bloody history which culminated in an almost totally devastating 1936 attack now its geometric sandy walls house sandy walls house elegant arched ramparts and a keyhole city gate that opens into a long zigzagging open air hall this is gorgeous just beautiful the insider tip says make sure to keep your ticket to the Alcazar's Museo de Ejercito Military Museum it's needed when you exit the museum make sure to keep your ticket to the Alcazar's Museo del Ejercito Military Museum hmm. that's interesting so they won't they don't want to let you out unless you have your ticket that's very interesting okay number eight Conwy Castle also in Wales this is just beautiful I wish that they could give us square footage of some of the or of these buildings that would be quite nice they should give us square footage and let us know like how many rooms or you know how much square footage I would love to know how big these are okay. power and domination are the key words for this Welsh stronghold built under Edward the first eight large round turrets and a tall curtain wall jut up from Conway Castle's rocky promontory making for sweeping views of the surrounding area and town the castle is patchy the roof is missing as are some sections of the floor but smart signage lets visitors envision how the great hall once looked insider tip traverse the dramatic suspension bridge to reach the castle it was designed with turrets to blend in with the fortress Wow Wow so beautiful okay that's number eight let's go to number nine Kilkenny Castle Ireland Ireland's most iconic castle is an enchanted blend of 
This I would love to see, oh my gosh. Enchanted blend of Gothic and Victorian styles nestled amid 50 acres of rolling lawns beside the River Noor. Built in 1172, it seems as though knights and damsels should still roam its romantic grounds. The Butlers, a powerful Irish clan called Kilkenny Castle, their home... What? That sentence doesn't make sense. The Butlers, a powerful... Oh, okay. A powerful Irish clan called Kilkenny Castle, their home, from 1391 until 1820, when William Robert turned the castle into a Victorian feudal revival wonderland. The castle's long gallery contains family portraits, tapestries, and a resplendent decorated ceiling with oak beams carved with Celtic lace work and animal beads, animal heads. That's pretty disgusting. I guess it's sort of like the, um, what do you call it, like the gothic designs where they have um, animals and beasts and things like that. And so they've carved those. Hmm. Interesting. Insider tip, check out the Butler Gallery, formerly Servants' Quarters, for a superb collection of Irish modern art. Okay, I don't see anyone coming in, so I'm just going to keep reading. What happened to number 10? I think it's coming up. Hmm, number 10 seems to be missing. Let's see. Uh... Yeah, I think number 10 is missing, so we can go to number 11. Okay, Blarney Castle, Cork, Ireland. It's amazing how you can look at nature in, in these pictures, and you can guess when it's Ireland, because Ireland is just so green and lush and rich, beautiful. You can usually, you can usually spot Ireland. Beautiful. The Blarney Stone might be Blarney Castle's true claim to fame, since the 15th century castle itself is nothing more than ruins now. Once you descended the 127 steep steps to claim the gift of Gab by kissing the stone and admired the views of the forested River Lee Valley, while waiting in line on the battlements. Stroll around the, the grounds and make your way to Rock Close, which contains oddly shaped limestone rocks and a grove uh, of ancient yew trees rumored to have been a Druid worship site. Insider tip. Lines to kiss the Blarney Stone are long, mid-June through early September. Go in early March for a shorter wait, plus a lovely display of neutralized daffodils. That's beautiful. You have this really tall tower here, lots of greenery, greenery surrounding it. I'm not sure what this tower is, but really pretty. Okay, Nymphenburg Palace, Munich, Germany. This is so pretty, so pretty. This stunning Baroque and Rococo Palace is the palace, is the largest of its kind in Germany and represents a glorious high point of Italian cultural influence. Nymphenburg's magnificent two-flower 
two-floor Great Hall is adorned with stucco and grandiose frescoes and is surrounded by the gallery of beauties whose walls are covered with portraits of Ludwig the First's mistresses. Outside, a formal French-style park extends to the woods with low hedges and gravel walks studded by ancient tree stands and three, pavil three pavilions, including Europe's first post-Roman heated pool. Now that sounds awesome. That sounds beautiful. You know, the word that we would have for something like this, you could say fancy, um, you could say upscale, but the, the word that really describes this level of detail and, and beauty and wealth, it would be opulence. Okay. Insider tip, don't leave without visiting the former royal stables, the Marastelli Museum, which houses a fleet of fantastical vehicles and world-renowned Nymphenburg porcelain. Okay. What a nice touch to have the duck in the water there like that. Okay. Very, very nice. Okay. Let's move on to number 13. Oops. Okay. Schönbrunn Palace, Vienna, Austria. The front gate of Vienna's Schönbrunn Palace. Okay. The front gate of Vienna's Schönbrunn Palace opens into a rigorously geometric main courtyard laid out in mirror-like precision, which leads to a breathtaking view on the palace's other side. Formal promenades cut diagonally through the garden, which, along with a fountain and trees, surround the Gloriette. Inside this huge Habsburg summer residence, splendid, mm, splendid state salons, the Hall of Mirrors, where six-year-old Mozart performed in 1762, and the grand and the grand, grand gallery await. Okay, here we go. Words are running together. Tropical views and exotic animals adorn the painted walls of the ground floor living quarters. Okay, insider tip. Bus trips to the castle offered by the city cost several times more than taking uh, the subway. However, they will not get you there with, uh, they will get you there with the least bit effort. Okay, Schönbrunn Palace. This is Vienna, Austria. Very nice. Looks beautiful. Looks quite grand and opulent. It looks like it could be a university. Okay. Right. Number fourteen. Mathoni Castle in Greece. The Grecian village of Mathoni is so lovely. It's one of the seven towns Agamemnon offered Achilles when his beloved bristles was carried off. Today its main attraction, the Castro, is the stuff of legends. The imposing 13th century citadel juts into the sea on a stone bridge leading to the Methoni's haunting island, leading to Methoni's haunting islands. Inside, costs of arms cover the walls. 
coats, sorry, inside coats of arms cover the walls, including the Venetian lions of St. Mark, representing their 1209 takeover of Mathoni. Inside are a tip. The savage Stoic fortress has a bloody past. The prominent octagonal Bortsi even served as the as a principal uh, as a prison once. The octagonal Bortsi even served as a prison once. Local lore says the winter winds let you hear the screams of prisoners past. Well, that's pretty sad. You don't want to be touring and sightseeing and hear ghosts screaming. When they say local lore, L-O-R-E, they are talking about stories that people tell. Sometimes you hear the word folklore. So in local folklore, they will say, if you listen, you can hear people screaming. You know, so. Right, and when they say people, they mean like ghosts. That's what they mean. Wow, so pretty. So pretty. Chateau et jardin de Villanger, Villandry, Lorre, France. Chateau of Villandry Gardens. From its cliffside walkway, the Chateau de Villandry's painstakingly related 16th century gardens look like massive flower chessboards. The terrace, the terraces comprise France's example of Renaissance garden design with a water design, with a water garden, an ornamental garden depicting symbols of chivalric love, a vast vegetable garden, and an intricate tapestry of rare, colorful flowers, um, and a, an aromatic and medicinal garden round out the spectacle, which continues inside with the paint and gilt Moorish ceilings and a fine collection of 17th century Spanish paintings. Insider tip. Okay. Visit the first weekend in July for the Nuit de Mifo, Rise of a Legends Night. Okay. Let's see. Knights of a not knights mm, of a thousand lights. When lanterns illuminate the gardens and a dance troupe performs, making for unparalleled photo ops. Well, there's no mistaking it. This is absolutely gorgeous. I wonder how much land is here. This is huge. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Chateau de Chambord, France. 19th century novelist Henry James described Chateau de Ch Chambord's towers as more like the spires of a city than the salient points of a single building. They are the first thing you see from Chambord's huge treehouse roads. The, cha uh, the chateau comprises a 13,000 acre forest, 400 rooms, and 365 chimneys. Inside wander the vast rooms decked in ancient regime furniture then ascends the enormous double helix staircase to the roof terrace with its spectacular chimney space of Italiante towers, current 
towers, turrets, cupolas, gables, and chimneys. Insider tip. Instead of the expensive tourist restaurants nearby, bring a picnic to enjoy on the grounds or in or in the woodlands to save money and time while getting the full experience of the palace. Okay, I still not see anyone here, so I will just continue to read these. Mont Saint Michel, Normandy, France. That is beautiful. My goodness. After the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre, this massive granite palace began in 709 is, is France's most, uh, third most visited site. Mont Saint Michel raises, rises some 400 feet above the seaside and is crowned with the Marvel or Great Monastery that was built during the 13th during the 13th century with the causeway connected mainland on the horizon. The Gothic Ren Romanesque Abbey is thrashed by riotous surf 264 feet below. Okay, guided tours explore the celebrated lace staircase and the exquisite Notre Dame sous terre, among other sports, but make time to wonder the labyrinth where, but make time to wonder the labyrinth vaulted rooms at your own risk. Okay, insider tip. The Archescope, which explores the myths of the Mont, is the one castle museum you should definitely make time for as an introduction to the area. Ro Roca, Calascio, Italy. This mountaintop fortress, or Roca, Roca, is the highest fortress in the Apennines. It's dark stone, stark stone and masonry belies its exclusive purpose as a military accommodation. Beginning as a simple watchtower from the true Watchtower in the 10th century, it soon acquired a walled courtyard flanked by four cylindrical corner towers and a taller inner um, tower. Battle never reached okay, battle never reached its stony walls, but a strong earthquake in 1461 caused considerable damage. The savage hills and punishing winds of the vertiginous Fort Review. Ouch. Fort Review. Uh, Fort Reward those who aren't faint of heart. Insider tip. If the panoramic views from the hill aren't enough for you, drive onward to the high plain of Campo Imparatore. Imparatore. Uh, which is also in great, uh, let me see, which is also in Gran Sasso, a Monte della Laga National Park. Okay, so we are talking about 25 awe inspiring European city um, sites or castles. Okay, right, next. That is highly impressive. Wow. That is absolutely gorgeous. Okay. 
also, uh, this is Roca del High Guaita, San Marino, Italy, Italy. Also known as the first tower, Roca de la Guaita is the highest and oldest of the three fortresses, fortresses that dominate the city of San Marino. The towers crudely the towers here crudely martial stonework which dates back to the 11th century made it an, an intimidating and effective squad for the first inhab inhabitants of Monte T Titano. Um, the inner wall is the, the oldest enclosing the bell tower the Tower of the Pin, oops, the Tower of the Pin, the housings of the legions, which later transformed into prison, the front yard contain a menacing array of artillery. Insider tip, a view of the entire city, the mountainous Romagnolo Apennines, and nearby castles such as Verrucchio are all unavailable from atop the bell tower. So even though it's so high up in the air, you can't see some of the cities. You can't see. Okay. This is really beautiful. Looks like the you can tell it's old because the the trees, the, the trees are starting to grow up on the curvature, the top top part of the mountain starting to grow there. Okay, let's see. Not seeing anyone come in. So, here we go. Let's go to number 20. I think we will actually get through all of these. Hmm. Okay. Corte Fra Fortress. Corte Fortress, Corsica, France. Okay. Corsica's citadel towers precariously above Corte from a rocky promontory and also goes by the eagle's nest. The faded, the faded pastel quarters of the old town rise in steps up to the remnants of the park remnants of the fortress. Its highest point offers a panoramic visa of the city and is and its environs including the confluence of three three rivers, exhibition halls of historic um, museum wait a minute historic photographs await inside Along with the Museum of Cor Corsica, the, the Regional Contemporary Art Funds, the Tourist, tourist Director, and the Scientific uh, and Technical Cultural Center of Corsica. So it looks like you can get di information directly from them. Okay. Okay, wait a minute, it's the one we just saw. Okay, Palace of Versailles, France. When Louis the Fourteenth and his 20,000 strong following arrived in the 18th century, the Gargantuan Chateau de Versailles uh, wasn't even big enough. An entire new capital was promptly constructed to accommodate them, all in pompous, flamboyant Baroque style. There's the Hall of Mirrors, where lavish uh, balls once occurred. The maniacally direct, uh, decorative 
Um, decorative state apartments. It's Uh, let me see. Huh. The chamber, um, the chamber de la reine, where Marie Antoinette once retired. So, there's the hall of mirrors where lavish balls once occurred. The man manically, manically decorative state apartments, and the world's was the world's most opulent bedroom. The Chamber de la Reine, and Chamber de la Reine means Room of the Queen, where Marie Antoinette once retired. It's a sprawling, frothy fervor of ostrich features, floral textiles, freely canopy beds, and gold-trimmed everything. Insider tip, arriving around 9 a.m. might just be the only way to avoid sitting crowds but if, um, the sitting cr the stifling crowds arriving around 9 a.m. might just be the only way to avoid the stifling crowds that fill Versailles uh, despite its size okay Vianden Luxembourg The tiny village of Vlanden, Vianden, already feels straight out of medieval times, but not until you glimpse Vlanden Castle rearing up on a hill overlooking the town are you swept away. Built in the 9th century, its conical conspires Crenellation, steep gables, and massive bullocks. Uh, bullocks lend the feudal lord's perch an ominous feel. At the hill's base, by the banks of the river Hour, a chairlift carries visitors up for remarkable views of the valley. A woodland path leads from the upper station to the castle below for those looking for a challenge. Okay, this is Vianden Luxembourg. Statuesque, huge, large, big, lots of nature surrounding it. Next. Okay, Neuschwanstein Castle, Bavaria, Germany. Like many Bavarian things, King Ludwig II's orna ornate castle looks torn from an illustrated uh, fairy castle. Its regal white towers of bombastic, of bombastic, um, its regal white towers and bombastic Middle Ages inspired decor contrast with the fundamental shyness that compared Lud Ludwig to construct. Yes, okay, to construct his elaborate private retreat in the first place. Ironically, the 1.4 million people yearly now describe, now descend upon the castle with its romantic melodramatic flair inspired by the epic operas of Richard Wagner and which in turn inspired Walt Disney's Magic Kingdom. Oh, that's why it looks familiar. Oh, that's really interesting. Along with legends, this is the insider tips. Along with legends, look out for the world's most. Oops. Look out for the castle's motif of swans. 
Along with legends, look out for the castle's motif of swans. They were the heraldic animal of the Counts of Chuanggao, whose successor the king considered himself to be. Okay. Castle St. Angelo, Rome, Italy. Hmm, seems like I've seen this like in a video game or a movie or something. This is definitely familiar. Definitely familiar. Castle St. Angelo, Rome, Italy. The circular medieval castle stand. Uh, the circular medieval castle stands between the Tiber and the Vatican and has long been one of Rome's most emblematic landmarks. Started, started in A.D. 135, Castle St. Angelo went from a marble cylinder topped by cypress trees to a hmm, to a fortress with a small chapel on top. Through the original Roman door of um, Hadrian's tomb, um, Hadrian's tomb, you enter and pass through an enclosed courtyard to a sinister vaulted brick corridor. Make your way to the Sala Paulina, decorated with lavish biblical frescoes. Insider tip, the Nati Animati di Castel St. Angelo Animated Nights are on hiatus, but they traditionally occur in July and August. They feature the castle as host of nightlife and entertainment into the wee hours. Okay, this is just beautiful. Really gorgeous. Okay, we only have three more. Malbork Castle. Oh, this is in Poland. How pretty. Now, this is gorgeous. Malbork Castle is the largest castle in the world by surface area. Oh and the largest brick building in Europe. It's a classic example of a Gothic medieval fortress. Built to strengthen the monastic Teutonic order's control of old Prussia, Prussia in 1406 until 1772, Malbrook served as a residence of the Polish kings. It was restored after World War II to its former splendor as an icon of the sanctity and violence of the Middle Ages Christianity. Situated on the Nogat River, it's a bold testament to the monastic state unrivaled by other Gothic architecture. Insider tip the castle makes a great day trip f from Gdansk. Trains to Malbork run every hour. This is really, really pretty. Ah, looks like something from a fairy tale. So this is the oldest structure. Let's see. And it say it is the largest castle in the world by surface area, surface area, and the largest brick building in Europe. That's what it was. Very interesting, Malbork Castle. So pretty. Oh, I've seen this one. Winter Palace, Saint Petersburg, Russia. Although only a few rooms are open to visitors, the Winter Palace is worth seeing. With 1,001 rooms of malachite, jasper, jade, 
uh, jasper, agate, and glided mirrors. It's easy to imagine this Russian Rocco um, monument housing Russia's rulers. The throat, the the great throne room, glows in rich marble and bronze, while the aptly named Malachite room dazzles with green columns and pilasters. Outside are rows of columns columns and 2,000 ornate windows on an aqua and gold backdrop, all capped by a roof balustrade of statues and vases. Okay, insider tip. Since it's part of the State Hermitage Museum, make sure you take in the incredible art collection as well beautiful. Their attention to detail is incredible. Okay, number 27. Wow, so pretty. High Clear Castle, Downton Abbey. Oh, like the television show. Oh my god, I love that show so much. This imperial man's in the south that of That is England. awesome, that show, you know. Do you like Downton Abbey, too? I love Downton Abbey. I love that show so much. Really? Oh, my God. I love period pieces. Wow. Mark, what are you doing here at five minutes before the class ends? Uh, you know what? I was away. I just got home. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Are you having a good day? Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay, no more talking. No more talking. <laughs> this imperial man's in the south of England is better known as Downton Abbey, masterpiece classics jugger juggernaut period drama that uses Highclere Castle as its namesakes, namesakes on-screen stand-in. You won't find Lord and Lady Grantham there, but you will find manicured gardens, commanding pinnacles that echo London's parliament, spectacular staterooms, a massive library, and sumptuous furniture that belongs to the owners. Insider tip, visit on late spring or summer weekends when High Clear is most likely to be open. Opening times are limited and unpredictable, so be sure to check ahead of time. That's beautiful. Well, that has been our tour of 25 awe-inspiring European castles. That was kind of drab. <laughs> I think it would have been more fun if I had somebody to talk to about it. Oh, whoops, I'm ending the broadcast. Um, it would have been more fun, but it was just like one building after the next. One building after the next. So, okay, I need to go set up my... Uh, is this my last class? Let me see. No, you have pronunciation class. No, I mean, yeah, the one coming up is the last one. Wait a minute. Am I even on the right? No, no, no. No, I have two more. You have two more, but... Oh, we have to look at skateboard designs. Okay. <laughs> I have to go set up the class. Bye. <laughs>